previously. Big brother. Did I fuck up? And so we go. Hello friends, my name is Renee, and welcome back to Corpse Party. We are, I believe, on chapter three? Possibly? I think so? No. No, we're all in like chapter four, aren't we? I don't remember. Um... What was chapter three? I don't remember. Because chapter two... I don't remember. Let's select it and see. Wait. Continue. Let's see if there's a save file. If there's a save file, then I've done this. Mm, okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's upsetting. I forgot about that. We're still on chapter two. <laughs> okay, well. I guess we're gonna go look around. Hello? No. Ah. I guess I'm not going that way. Yeet! Alright. Not going back out either. Uh, boys of oratory. Hello? Oh yeah. I can't use the bathroom in here. Okay. Uh, down I guess? Oh. The female student corpse lies sprawled out on the floor. There are a couple scraps of paper from the letter set gently resting on top of bony hand. Life is fickle, but I still have faith in it. That good luck charm, I know it's stupid. I truly believe it works. So I know I'll see you again, Nao. If anyone else finds this letter, please wish her good luck for me. Kaori Kimura, class 2-4, Lexern High. I'm not going to read that because I think it's 5 of 5. And I'm not keen on dying today. Let's go this way. Okay, girls of oratory. There's still a bunch of shit here. This music is so loud. What the fuck? Yo, what are you doing? You're Machita's sister. Um, uh, I swear this place is going to drive us all batty. To think there'd be a corpse like this so close by. Hmm? You're shaking. What happened to Machita? Big brother's gone away somewhere. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> you poor thing. Come with me. I hope you find him. No, uh, I'll be okay. I'll search for him by myself. Why are you running? Why are you running? Creeping me the hell out. She's not breathing. Her eye have a, her eyes have a hollow appearance to them, yet still retain a tiny echo of life and reflect a palatable sense of humor. It's almost as if she could snap out of it at any moment, stand up and walk away. The course is so fresh, simply being out of its presence is quieting. Uh, Heavenly Host Elementary, due to the earned reputation from repeated tragic incidents and accidents in and around the school, plans for its abolition have been finalized. There have been a sharp decline in registration and attendance since the initial incidents, indicating to the school board that our time is at an end. We sincerely regret to announce that Heavenly Host Elementary School will close its doors for the last time on November the 18th, 1975. It is through my own failings that this disdainful decision has come to pass, and for that, I must offer my deepest apologies to all who were affected. Filed to all teaching staff, Heavenly Host Elementary, Principal Takumi Nyakihori. I guess let's go this way. Hey. There's a shadow here. Ah. Uh, 
plastered. And this way, I guess. <coughs> All right, well. There's a decaying corpse sitting in the chair. Lexer and Senior High School, Class 2-4, and now Takahashi. Kaorin, Kaorin, I miss you. Oh, that's so sad. Now where am I? Uh, sure. It's not terrifying at all. What's up this way? I think I could go up here before. Oh no, this is just the staff room. Okay. <sighs> Where the hell do I go? Just wandering around this school. I feel like I'm going to burst. Uh, I just need a bathroom. Where is the bathroom for the little girl? Okay, I guess if you don't want to, you don't gotta play for me. Goodbye. Alright, well. I guess back up this way. I don't know where else the hell to go. Yo! Why are you following me? Go away. Creeper? What the fuck? Why are you being a weirdo? Go the fuck away. Fucking weird ass asshole. You follow me in here too? Probably. Uh, I can't go that way. There you are. Being a fucking weirdo. Stop. Oh my god, you're still following me. Real dude, I'm not in the mood for this right now. I guess I'm going up here. Uh, Quato. Okay, are you down here? Probably. Yo. Why are you still following me if you're just gonna ask me why I'm running over and over repeatedly? Fucking weirdo. Jesus. I have to hide. Guess in the bathroom? <laughs> Big brother, I'm scared. Um, hi? Why are you chasing me around the fucking bathroom? Your AI is coded so strangely. Can you like leave me alone, please? I'm already being chased by an asshole. How many times do I have to do this before the door opens? This is just rude.
Seriously. Just let me the fuck out. Okay, guys. So apparently, I fucked up. So I'm gonna just die. Get back. Get back. So yeah. I've gotta, I gotta go through all this nonsense. Where? It must be nighttime. I'm, unless I've woken up in the middle of the night again. Probably drink too much juice before bed. <sighs> Since I'm up anyway, I guess I'll wake Big Brother and bug him a little before I go back to sleep. And maybe drink a nice big glass of peach juice, too. Yeah, that sounds good. Peach juice does sound good. Give back. Give back. What? Give back! <gasps> the spirit of a little girl appears to be right appears right in front of Yuka's face, glowing a bluish white. Where the left eye should be only a gaping empty socket can be seen. The quieting snip snip sound grows even louder and the spirit draws nearer and presents the item she holds in her hand. It's a pair of sewing scissors and she's brandishing them dangerously close to Yuka's face. The inner blades are dull, rusty, and caked with blood. There's little doubt that the following events are going to be unimaginably excruciating. Give it back! Give it back! My eye! Give it back! The girl repeats her futile demand over and over again, bringing the blades closer and closer and closer each time. I can't move. Big Brother. Give it to me. No, Big Brother. Ah! Yuka's left eye offers little resistance as the jagged blood-soaked blade does something excruciating. Her vision runs red as waves of blood. She instinctively reaches up to pull the sleeve out, but just touching them lightly causes new jolts of torturous misery to flow through her body. <laughs> Son of foreign object scraping against uh, no other experience could possibly prepare her for this. The pain grows exponentially worse. It's not something you can adapt to. It's not something you can ignore. All you can think do is think heaven above when you finally die. Mm. Poor Yuka. I got her killed. Not mean to get Yuka killed. <sighs> okay. Well, don't go in the boys' bathroom. That's what I see. My bad. Where's the middle finger? <gasps> oh. Back to this we go. make sure I get all this because I don't know if I did do, 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 do. all right <sighs> yo again hello Yep, yep, we've been through this already. <laughs> Come on.
Why are you running? Okay. Back down we go. All the way to the floor. Yeah, 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 gotta hide. Not that direction. I feel like I'm going to burst. Ah! Hello? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Hello? Big brother, you lied. You lied to me. You said you wouldn't leave me by myself. Eh? Are you injured? That that's not my big brother. I'm so sorry. I'm my name is Yuka Machida. <laughs> my you have the face of a psychopath. Mine's Yuya Kizami. I'm an eleventh grader at Byakuden Senior High. Kizami. Okay. Yuka was it? Were you also spirited away here? After performing the forbidden Shichiko charm. Uh I don't know. I see. Given that you called me big brother a moment ago, I assume he's come here with you? Y yeah. Big brother. <laughs> you poor girl. I've also become separated from my little sister. I'm presently searching for her. My little sister is in here? I feel like you're a liar. She is. I feel like... You can may accompany me. We'll look for your big brother along the way. In a place like this, after all, the living should stick together as much as possible. My poor sister is probably all somewhere crying right now, just as you are. I simply must find her, so what do you say? Will you join the hunt? Um, yes, please. Help me find my big brother. I will. Fear not. I'm certain we'll cross this path. I don't trust you for a second. I'll get this through here with this in the way, so. <laughs> Whoa. Dude is strong. Hey, I know where we can go. You can lead me down here. So I can move this cabinet. feeling there's something here I need to find, but I don't know what it is. Kaori, be very careful around the green skull splattered all over the floor. They can kill you. I ran into a spiritual leader who left behind a pair of shoes blessed with holy water. If one person wears them, then all attendants join hands. Then, and only then, is it safe to traverse the accursed green menace. When I see sor whenever I see sorrowful bodies of those who died here, I feel as if I make a rapid quarry. I beg of you, survive these ordeals. Live. A pair of shoes with a faint, nearly imperceptible bluish glow catches your eye from under the desk. Take them? Yes. Fire blessed shoes. Spirit did not like us taking the shoes. But now I can get to the green shit. I feel like that's where I need to go. Um, which apparently is not here. Okay. Maybe this way? school is too fucking big. Awesome. Uh, I don't want to go that way, actually. Thank you. Well, uh, going here. Sign change? Nope. Uh, this is still down here. 
do 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 do. Is what's his name still here? Nope, nope, he is not. <sighs> Good. Are you all right? This is terrible. Have you seen the ghost of the children? Y yeah, I have. I've been reading the school's flyers and dying messages scattered throughout the school. It seems that the ghost of the man who killed all these children is in here somewhere as well. He's apparently quite large and holds a hammer. You must be on your guard. I've had a great many of my friends. Many, many, many people killed by that man and that village of children. <gasps> At any rate, something. Come, we must find my sister and your brother before it's too late. Brother, I sure hope you're alright. Hey, I got her name tag finally. Uh, okay. Yep, we read this already. Cool. <sighs> hey. Walk through here now. Yeah. Wired crystal of unsealing. I, uh, I really have to go to the bathroom. Don't tell me you've been holding it in all this time, have you? Uh-huh. I will. My, my. Well, we best find you a place to release yourself, then. But I seem to recall our options being rather limited. Cool. What about over here? That's not where I meant to be. Ugh. Aha. The crystal of unsealing shattered. Uh, okay. Seems usable now. Will you be alright by yourself? Uh-huh. I'll be okay. Get to it then. I'll be waiting right here for you. Thanks. Yo. Hello. Kizami. Kizami, is that really you? Kurosaki, you're alive. You too, man. You're a sight for sore eyes. Finally, someone else who isn't dead. God for second place that this is. I was at my wits end just now, let me tell you. Outside of the school, there's nothing but trees as far as the eye can see. Thought about braving the wilderness, but it seems like one of those forests of the lost you see in video games. Once you enter, you can never leave. So what the hell is this place anyway? Damn it all. There are actual honest-to-goodness ghosts in here, you know? Uh, I think we may. We suck here for good. There's no way out for any of us. Did you see? Mutsuki, in the next room. She's dead. Yeah, I saw. I just don't know how to handle this. I feel like there's a certain number. A certain number of dead bodies and a person is expected to see within his lifetime. And I swear in the last hour alone, I think I've far surpassed my quota. Uh, just yesterday, Mitsuki dumped her boyfriend after finding out he was cheating on her with three other women. She'd been really down about it all morning. So I sent her some stupid text messages during class to cheer her up. She seemed mad about it during study hall. But then she sent me a thank you message in the very next period. I think I was actually able to lift her spirits a little. Now, though, she's gone. Killed by actual spirits. I guess it was those children. Whoa, what the fuck? Huh? Why? What What are you doing? I knew I didn't trust you. Ugh. No. In these walls, it doesn't matter if you're killed by them or killed by me. I, either way, you're dead. Uh, where? What? 
What happened? Where am I? No, Yuka? I, was I knocked out? Yuka, where are you? Are, are you there? Inventory of incoming students. Ojima, 21 boys. Hino, Hino Tomo, elementary, 10 girls. Caring, village, Montessori, 13 boys. Ushu, Shao West Elementary, 18 girls. Armor, Gardens, Academy, 6 girls. Hey, the remains of a female student is brought out on the ground here. Her student ID name tag is still pinned to her breast pocket. Um, okay. Only House Elementary School closure date, 11-18-1975. Photograph for Principal Takamine Yang covered in bloody handprints and someone was frantically caressing it. Have ha it's haphazardly crammed to bursting with crumpled up documents, newspaper clippings, and scrap paper. School scandals continue. Principal question on liability. A cursed school. Many grisly happenings at Heavenly Host. School nurse reported missing. I don't want to read that paper in case it's a victim memoir. I really want to find a candle. Strange but true stories of the occult chasing down the hidden uh, paths of the cursed school building. It really exists by Kokobiki. Give it a look. Sure. Strange. Over the course of several days, a series of incidents occurred within this town in which younger children disappeared one after another. Their whereabouts were ultimately discovered through a thorough police investigation, but said findings were very, very much a worst case scenario. Three of the missing children were found dead in a concealed room beneath Heavenly Host Elementary and officially unused throughout the school's history. The fourth missing child was thankfully still alive, quaking in fear on the ground, presumably only moments away from demise when police arrived. Capping off this nightmare scene was an adult male member of the school's teaching staff who seemed to be in a state of confusion. In his hands were a pair of bloodied scissors. A surviving elementary school student, after a psychological counseling, gave official testimony figuring the scissor man is abductor or murderer. The staff member in question was officially charged with multiple counts of abduction and murder of minors as well as des desecration of the dead. He was quickly taken to trial where an insanity plea spared him from prisoner death but resulted in compulsory admittance to a mental hospital. Interestingly, the perpetrator of these crimes was none other than the school principal's own son who was widely renowned for his jovial personality. However, due to a mental ailment of unknown origin, he'd begun losing his ability to speak little by little during his years teaching at Heavenly Host. The computer screen was tripping me out. Once his speech was all but gone, he began searching for alternate places of employment, which occupied him for several months prior to the crime. The results of his endeavor were not favorable. However, and most of his days were spent staggering idly through the streets. His reputation quickly degraded. Several months after his admittance to the mental hospital, he seemed to slip past the many nurses on duty and escape the premises. Immediately upon doing so, he made his way into the concealed basement at Heavenly Host Elementary, where he took his own life by hanging. The three children had killed... He had killed all Heavenly Host Elementary students, but the one girl who rescued from the gaping wall of Slumper was not. Following her close call, she and family moved to another prefecture far from the memories that no doubt would have otherwise haunted them forever. Sadly, this was only the beginning of the misfortune that would hereafter plague the school, which had already earned itself many an unsettling rumor. Over the next few days, Heavenly Host would become a stage for countless incidents of rape, molestation, and suicide. With student registration attendance dwindling at an alarming rate in response to these crimes, the school was eventually shut down. The 60-year-old principal at the time had become infamous as an eccentric who adorned his walls, doors, and furniture with incomprehensible scrolls. Even later, forensic analysis of the writings throughout his office could make little sense of his haphazardly scribbled enumerations. And the day after the school's closure date was finalized, the age eccentric threw itself from the roof. He broke his neck on impact, dying instantly. As you can clearly discern, the sordid history of the school is indeed awful, but there are many more. There may be more to it than merely a series of unfortunate incidents. A power greater, greater than any of us can comprehend may be acting as puppeteer from the shadows, maintaining an actual, tangible curse upon this property. And the key to it all lies within the sole survivor, the girl who bore witness to the brutal mur murders and mutilations of the three children no older than she. The girl in the red dress, the one who got away. My investigations into the supernatural side of this horrific massacre is only just the beginning. Rest assured, I intend to make this a regular feature. I've begun gathering data for a follow-up report, so stay tuned. The next issue promised to uncover more details in this morbidly fascinating story. According to this article, the one girl survived the murders, but if this photograph is accurate, then it's the same girl in the red dress we saw earlier. 
Why would someone who wasn't killed be haunting the school? That's a great question. Heavenly Host Bulletin. An individual unaffiliated with the school broke into the building last night and killed himself. This is the third such incident. The deceased was a 72-year-old and single male from the neighboring prefecture. Let's see. It's a bloodstained cassette on the floor. It seems to be from a digital video camera. Pick it up. Yeah. Hard mini DB tape. The label reads Kabiki Research Data. Uh, 1... 2005, 1119. Kibiki? Uh, I did not mean to read that. Okay. No, I... Well. I'm an idiot. I, I should have. I've always idolized you. You constantly surpassed me in every way. Always one step ahead, no matter what we were doing. But telling myself that at some point I turned a corner and you'd be there. But I knew better, my brain knew better, my brain rejected the notion from the beginning. I did not mean to read this. I should die. If I should dream in death, though, then I'm going to see you as I turn this next quarter I've been praying for all this time. We could beat up on each other like we used to, and I'll never have to be alone again. Yeah, okay. Uh, next thing he knew, he was standing in the corner of an extremely narrow red room. His movements weren't his own, as if his mind were disconnected from his body with no perception of the surface of gravity or motion. After a sudden dip jarred his senses, he realized he was moving purely on nerve impulses with no direction or control. Perhaps he'd been taken in by the curse or the wave of negativity that permeated this, permeated this space far beyond the spectrum of human understanding. The shell of a body might have been a twig snapping across the ground in a windstorm. Ah, ah, ah. Without warning, his very sense of self had been completely destroyed, leaving him in a virtually lobotomized state. Since the remnants of a man's tormented soul are indeed a thing best left untouched. For this dying message, as the curse it carried, certainly had no trouble at all dismantling the essence of what was once a boy named Satoshi. <sighs> I did not mean to read that. Game over. Now I have to go back through all that other crap. I don't wanna, but I'm going to. Let's do that again. Come on. <sighs> All right, go back up here. Wait, am I going the right way? I think I am. Yeah, because I gotta read over this again. And I have to guard the crystal again. Got our name tag. All right, now we gotta go find that thing again. Wait, does that mean that I could read? Or is that the memoirs down there? I don't know. Okay. Hmm. Read that. <sighs> Hold on a minute. I'll go there in a second. I am going to go down here real quick. And check out this note that I guess I didn't read. Or did I? Yep, four or five. Cold, hurts in your fingers, no strength to write on desk, cannot talk or see friend. Tendon and leg cut, bleeding badly. Okay, now I've read four or five. At least the fifth one, it gives you the option to read it or not read it. <sighs> okay. Save again. Yes. Because I don't want to go through that nonsense again. 
And I could just walk up here and watch another fucking cutscene. <sighs> but that's life, isn't it? Just getting stuff done and then doing stuff. Alright. Hello, cat. Alright. Now I'm gonna skip through all this again. What's up, kitten? Hmm. <clears throat> Come on. He's on me. Oh, come on, please. Run. And dead. Yep. Yep. Killing you. Duh. Is it an obvious? He's got the face of a psychopath. Okay. Kitty cat, what's up? And now we're back to Satoshi. <sighs> cool. Awesome. And I gotta read everything again. Yep, Yuka's gone. Hi, no, please stop, cat. I love you. Okay. I read that. Read that. Right. Uh. Read it. Okay. Now I've read everything again. I go pick this up. Pick up the bloodstained cassette. Awesome. Kazami? Kibiki. That's right. He said Kibiki. Did I look at this girl? I guess so. Can I leave? I'm locked in. Yo! No. Oh. To worry so much for another's well being that it torments you to the core. It's the exquisite sting. Stigmata that afflicts the living and the dead alike. Um, and you are. Oh, her eyes are so cloudy. She looks like a dead fish. I'm the spirit of a girl who died here. <clears throat> okay, I'm not really sure how to respond to that. Happiness and unhappiness are linked. Whenever one attempts to gain good fortune with little effort, there is always risk. What are you trying to say? You and your friends have become trapped in this school because you performed the secret char ever after charm and messed it up. Said Chica, did you mean that paper doll thing we all did? How did we mess it up? What if you chanted the phrase too many times or too few, the number of participants and the number of repetitions that must be spoken? And somebody goofed. What? You said it exactly nine times, right? Said Chica, we beg of you, nine times. You have to say it one time for every person. No more, no less, or the charm will fail. Pretty sure it wasn't me. I remember saying it nine times. So did someone else mess up? And is that why? No. No, I'm not going to start placing blame. This wasn't anyone's fault. It may have been on purpose. One of your friends probably thought the whole thing was silly and didn't even bother to count. 
Or maybe a misguided member of the group didn't want the fun to end and knowingly flubbed the charm in a vain attempt to prompting a do over. No. <gasps> no. <laughs> Even if it wasn't on purpose, some of your friends have a tendency to not take things very seriously, no? It's not in inconceivable that they'd mess up. And just say, oh well, it's not like I'll ever be found out. Without even realizing their actions would ultimately lead you, ultimately damn you all. <laughs> no one's owned up to it, right? Not a single one of your friends have said to you, I screwed up. I'm so very sorry. Shut the hell up already. <laughs> my apologies. I have proposed far too many likely scenarios, it seems. Perhaps it's the nature of my job. I have long since abandoned my writings, after all. You do still have your scrap of the paper doll, no? Be sure you hang on to that, and hang on to it tight. Treat it like a memento. Memento of those who are dear to you. Um, sorry, to cut this short, I'm in a bit of a hurry here. I seem to have gotten separated from my little sister, and there's still some other people I need to find, too. Such concern for your friends, all the impulses that go with it, spurring in the heart and action, it's truly a noble sentiment. That's all charms really are, you know. They represent one's regards for other people. They're like microorganisms of the soul. Whether it be love or hate, all you need is a truly strong emotion to set them off. The stronger it is, the more powerful the charm. Splendid man's hook. I'm burning up. Wait, hold on. Are you? It feels like my body's on fire. Stop this. Please stop. Uh, well, not allow anyone to stand in our way. Those who do will suffer without mercy. Now go. The one who occupies your thoughts. And they probably won't make them in time. <laughs> Continued in chapter four. Well, fuck me. Continued in chapter four, kitten. Come on, can we can we skip past this? No, not gonna let me. Okay, that's fun. <sighs> I think I gotta do this after every chapter. Team Gris Gris. Gray Gray. Extra chapter, Meeting of the Minds, now available for play. Hey. Cool. Awesome. Well, looks like that's the end of that video. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode of whatever I decide to make. We're now setting out. Bye!